Hello, YouTubers. Oh, hello, Justice World. You're probably thinking, where have you been? I shall tell thee. This is my report from the Royal Court of Justice in London. It's been a long old day, so I, um, please forgive me. I'm very tired, but I want to get this out. Why? Well, Court 13, which is where it was, was in session at 10 o'clock this morning for five minutes. That's all it took, even less than Nottingham Magistrates Court, which was 12 minutes, five minutes. Mrs Justice Steen presiding. And Mrs Justice Steen was the judge that presided over the Wagatha Christie trial. Remember that? Colleen Rooney, Rebecca Vardy. Uh, so what, are, what you're going to get in this video is not what you've got elsewhere. I think it was Emma L commented on um, the, the little promo I did for this video. And she said, we've seen it all, Adrian. It's, it's all over. It's online. The, the Mail, the BBC, the Guardian, we've seen it all. No, you haven't. You haven't. And I'll tell you for why. I was the only member of the public in that court. I mean, there was the claimant and defendant's barristers. There was the judge. This is Justice Steen. There was a, a couple of uh, court bods that were floating around. But apart from that, I was the only one. There was... Well, she told me she was uh, a junior legal clerk and just wanted to come in and, and observe what was going on. But she made no notes. None. She just watched. I think it was it must have been something to do with the judge, Wagatha Christie, Jeremy Vine. I mean, Alex who? So I was the only one in court. So everything that you are reading online, I don't know. Well, I do, but I'm not going to say it here. I don't know how it's got to those, to the press association, to all the newspapers that are reporting it, because there was not a single journalist in court. Not one. Nix, nada, absolutely nout. So how would it get into the press? Who leaked it? Because it had to have been. So what you're going to get in this video, near the end of the video, I'm going to read you the full statement, or apology, if you wish, by Alex Belfield. Not even the Black Belt Barrister gave you that. You would have thought he would have known, considering he's good mates with Alan Robertshaw, but he didn't. But I'm going to, because I was there. I can report it. Because I was physically there and made the notes, I can report it. Genuinely. So, I'm going to read you the apology in full near the end of this video. And this, this video is not going to be a long video. But I'm just going to remind you that Alex Belfield was jailed for five and a half years in September 2022 for harassing four people online. For the new people coming to the channel, I'm, I'm going to give you context and uh, details and facts about the case so that you can sort of reacquaint yourself because it's been nine months. Belfield was convicted of stalking BBC Radio Northampton presenter Bernie Keith and videographer Ben Hewis. In relation to Jeremy Vine and theatre blogger Philip Dehaney, Belfield was found guilty of two lesser offences of simple stalking, which does not require serious alarm or distress to be proved. And I'm reading this because obviously reporting from the court, I'm going to have to be accurate in my notes. Now, while you're listening to this, remember, Alex Belfield was fighting for free speech. He told you that ad nauseum. He was fighting for free speech. He said... It was all a witch hunt. The trial. It's a witch hunt. I'm being persecuted. In essence, Alex Belfield portrayed himself as the victim. And this today was Vine versus Belfield in a civil court action for defamation. And it's interesting that the BBC's reporting of the court hearing today includes quotes and is very accurate in its reporting. I told you, there wasn't anybody there. Me. And I've not spoken to the BBC. Now, they've included the quotes. It's very accurate in its reporting, albeit a little jumbled in the actual presentation of the facts. Some bits of They've reported earlier in their reportage and some bits they've put later. So they're not in sequence, I think is the word that I'm looking for. Not in the natural sequence that it was presented to the court. But the facts are still the facts. 
There was no one else there, as I say, save me and a junior legal clerk. And I walked out of the court with her and she was, uh, uh, she just said, oh, you know, I just popped over. Did I believe her? No, don't be silly. I just popped in. Behave. Um, there was no journalists. None. Nix. Nada. Nout. So I'll ask you the question. How did they actually get the quotes? I'm going to read you the quotes. So how did they get them? Because I made notes. So the barrister for Jeremy Vine stood up and laid out context and details of the background of the case. Thus, Jeremy Vine's barrister said Belfield made false allegations in nine YouTube videos and eight tweets published in 2020. Gervais de Wilde told Mrs Justice Steen, Wagatha Christie, that Belfield, a former BBC Radio Leeds presenter, posted entirely false allegations between May and August of that year. This included the false claim that Vine was, and I quote, seriously and demonstrably dishonest because he had publicly and repeatedly lied about his knowledge of the circumstances in which the BBC donated £1,000 towards a memorial fund for radio executive John Myers, whom I knew personally for many years since the 80s. Chunky e. Myers. Mr Myers, who died in June 2019, was actually on a golf course from a heart attack, was one of Vine's closest friends, the court was told. Mr DeWile said Belfield also sought to obtain private information concerning Jeremy Vine, including the phone numbers of family and friends, for the purposes of publishing and disclosing that information online. The court heard Belfield also encouraged members of the public to contact Vine during his broadcasting work and during his day-to-day -day life. Jeremy Vine was also made deeply upset and anxious by the defendant's harassment of him, and he became concerned for the safety of his family. Now, giving evidence during Belfield's separate criminal trial, Jeremy Vine said the saddest thing was when one of Belfield's followers called him a thieving tow rag under a Facebook tribute to his late father, who died with Parkinson's disease in 2018. Jeremy Vine described the harassment as like an avalanche of hatred you get hit by, an absolutely Olympic-level stalking, even for broadcasting. So Mr DeWild followed that by saying that Belfield's criminal conviction, in which Belfield accepted the defamatory and seriously harmful allegations of dishonesty which he made against Jeremy Vine, are entirely false. The defendant's defamatory allegation struck at the heart of the claimant's long-standing reputation for integrity and probity in his work as a journalist. Quote, Following the issuing of these proceedings, the defendant remains defiant. When he entered a defence in these proceedings, he denied liability. Belfield, he said, had agreed to pay Jeremy Vine substantial damages as well as his legal costs and to give undertakings subject to a penal notice in respect of future publications and conduct concerning Jeremy Vine. The exact amount was not disclosed to the court, but my impeccable sources suggest that all in all, almost half of what is in Champagne Sipper's account will have been used. Remember that he had to deposit 20 grand on account earlier in proceedings. This is, this is going to end up being hundreds of thousands of pounds. Just this case. And I'm going to quote again. He wishes to apologise unreservedly, publicly, for the damage and distress caused to Jeremy Vine and his reputation by his publications and express his, that's Alex Belfield, profound and unreserved regret for all of the harm for which he is responsible. 
Alex Belfield's words. Now, the defendant's representative, Alan Robertshaw, stood up, and I am quoting directly. This was what was read to the court this morning. My lady, on behalf of Mr. Belfield, I wish to associate myself with everything that has been said by counsel for the claimant. Mr. Belfield never had any basis at all to make the false allegations of dishonesty against the claimant, for which he is responsible. And nor was there any justification for his harassment of the claimant. He wishes to apologise unreservedly for the damage and distress caused to the claimant and his reputation by his publications and expresses profound and unreserved regret for all of the harm for which he is responsible. The defendant now accepts that, contrary to the public stance which he has adopted for more than two years, including within these proceedings, the defamatory and seriously harmful allegations of dishonesty which he made against the claimant are entirely false. And I'll remind you, and I'll quote, Belfield accepted the defamatory and seriously harmful allegations of dishonesty which he made against Jeremy Vine are entirely false. He wishes to apologise unreservedly, publicly, for the damage and distress caused to Jeremy Vine and his reputation by his publications and express his profound and unreserved regret for all of the harm for which he is responsible. What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear your comments. Remember, I remind you, Alex Belfield, quote, I will have my day in court. And when he did, didn't take the witness stand. Didn't have a legal team with him. Had to have a barrister appointed to him by the court. I will sue the BBC and Nottinghamshire Police. And I'm also going to remind you, Alex Belfield told you he was fighting for free speech. And yet, his apology and the unreserved apology that he issued to the court today confirms it was all based in lies. Had no basis at all. None, according to his representation. No basis at all. Lies. Fighting for free speech? Alex Belfield in a court of law, said it was all a witch hunt. Said he was being persecuted. And in essence, he was the victim. Well, actually, the court of law sorted that out today. A fool and his money are easily parted. Now, if you wish, because I know that you're going to have to take my word that this was actually what was represented in court today. I was there, I told you. And I did, there's a little... A little short of 20 seconds that I made outside the court and it was initially to corroborate the fact that I was there. I do have some other photographs that I may use as thumbnails and when I came out of the court there was a just stop oil demonstration. I swore, I took a little video and I swore, which I may upload if I can get it past the algorithm, um, just as proof that I was there this morning. So what I am reporting to you is the truth, the facts of the proceedings today and if you um the court announced at the end of it that uh, the judgment will be available in the national archives should you wish to view it so that will be a document an, an historical document for time immemorial it's in the national archives so you can go and access it anytime you wish but that is my report from the Royal Court of Justice in London, Court 13, which was in session from 10 o'clock this morning for five minutes. And it was Mrs. Justice Steen presiding, the same judge that presided over the Wagga. I mean, I love that. I love the Wagga the Christie trial. Colleen Rooney and Rebecca Vardy. Rebecca Va Vardy still hasn't accepted it. But that was, I was there, and I can tell you that what I've reported to you is as close to the facts as I could possibly get. My name's Adrian Allen. Thank you for your likes. Please, if you could uh, 
if you could hit the thummy thing, hit the likes um, for the video if you feel so inclined. Um, don't forget to ding the bell so you'll be aware of when the next uh, video arrives. Um, thank you for your subscriptions, but most of all, thank you for your indulgence. I did this for you so you could have the facts and they won't waver. The sword of truth is always mightier. Thank you for your indulgence. My name's Adrian Allen and I'll see you in the next video.